I'm Nigerian journalist Kemi Omolulu Good afternoon. It's Monday, the 8th of July, 2019 in Nigeria. I want to do a broadcast right now with regards to the Busola Dakolo and Timi Dakolo case against Pastor Biodu Fatu Yimbu of Commonwealth of Zion Assembly in Abuja. I've been the only journalist in depth reporting and in depth investigating this. I am a broadcast journalist and I specify my work as medical, health, music, and investigative journalism, along with opinion journalism. In this case, investigative journalism is going to merge with opinion, but most of this investigation is going to be 80% investigative journalism, 20% opinion journalism. My investigation is all the way to 90%. And I have to tell you, some people are not going to like my findings. Busola Dakolo and Tumishe Oluyade were not raped by Pastor Biodun Fatsoyimbo. These are my findings. If you want other findings, you have to go to other journalists or other media houses. If they want to do theirs, they can do theirs. Mine is an independent investigation. And my findings were these two ladies were never raped. Whatever happened between them and Pastor Biodu basically was consensual. If anything happened. I find it very hard to believe them both. I have facts. Very disturbing facts that you're going to see. Many of them I've already posted. Many videos. Many postings. There's still lots more coming. I've interviewed family members from both sides. I've interviewed church members. And now their own church has gotten involved in the investigation. Excuse me. Some pastor in their church called my father and told my father that an Igbo journalist is threatening me. A move to let me stop investigating. The only Igbo journalist that I could imagine that would be threatening me in this case will be Chude. Chude no Chude is why Niger. Why would Chude be threatening me? He's not even threatening me. It's a ploy by whoever this pastor is to stop my investigation. And my father was telling me I don't want you to go to prison again for any pastor cases. I don't want anybody to harm you. Blah, blah, blah. There's nobody trying to harm me. I'm not going to prison for anything. I'm doing my job. I specifically did a broadcast yesterday, Sunday, the 7th of July, 2019, telling Pastor Paul Adifarasi of House on the Rock in Lagos to call his pastors to order and tell them not to call my father. Nobody in that church should call my father. Not Pastor Adifarasi, not any of his pastor. This is a very serious investigation. He borders around lies, it borders around adultery, fornication, name it. There's a lot of things involved here. There are children involved in this case. The Dakolos have children. They know their mother has just accused a pastor of rape. The Fatsunibos have children. They know somebody has just accused their father of rape. It's very important to be very sensitive in this case. This is one of my most difficult investigations. I've done over 22 in my lifetime. In 25 years of journalism, and this is one of the hardest. It looks even harder than the man that was chopping women in a church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, storing them in the freezer and eating them, cooking their bodies whenever he wanted. Some things are very, very hard. I'm not a detective. A detective is a police investigator. An investigative journalist is different. There are journalists that work with police when the investigation's going on. That's us. And then many of these journalists will work with the police department in the Nigerian police force. I'm aware of that because of the IGP monitoring unit. Okay, police prosecutor Umana told me a story about Professor Libari, the professor of University of Portaco that was murdered. One Nation reporter was working alongside them step by step to do the investigation. And police, the public, and the media work together in America and Canada in something they call Crime Stoppers. If you have a tip, you call anonymously. And I've given people the anonymous place to put their tip 
hnnafricannews at yahoo.com. All tips are anonymous. I protect the source because I'm a journalist. Some people said I didn't protect some source. Tumishi Oluyede is not a source. She's an alleged rape victim. Why Nigeria did not protect her? The letters speak with her voice. They only protected her face. And they're obligated to protect her. I personally feel that they set her up so that people can hear her. Her friends heard her voice. They knew it was her. So Kemi Alunla, a journalist, heard her voice, and now it's like I'm an evil person. No, it's the same thing. Why not just responsible for that? Now, at the end of the day, Busola Dakolo lied. I can tell you now, 95.5% that she was not raped by the pastor. If anything happened between them both, she had intercourse with the pastor. Allegedly. I'm even non-affirmative, you know, phrasing it. There are allegations of rape. I say there should be allegations of consensual sex. Of course, I want to talk to the pastor. Everybody's telling me, have you talked to the pastor? How am I going to talk to a pastor that's in seclusion? A pastor that you guys forced off the pulpit? A pastor who's told to step down? Nigerians, wake up. We are smart, but not intelligent. S-B-N-I, my phrase. Give journalists opportunities to do their work. I'm an investigative journalist. I could have interviewed Pastor Fatson Ibu way before you guys forced him out of the church. I would suggest that House on the Rock stay out of this investigation because some people are now sending me tips saying that this is a fight between House of the Rock, House on the Rock, and Koza. Never heard of anything like this before. Okay, except for the Salvation Ministry versus OPM. Both pastors I've spoken to, both pastors have prayed for me. I am a member of Salvation Ministry. I worship online. But the public is fueling a lot of this stuff. You know, uh, OPM shaded, BOM, BOM shaded, OPM. Is this what we have going on? Koza versus House on the Rock? I hope not, because these houses of God are supposed to be for worship, not for hate. I always say to my fans, be hated, don't hate. Don't hate anybody. I've had a lot of tired days and nights, 15 hours a day working on this case. I'm going to summarize my investigation as soon as Pastor Fatou Ibu comes out of seclusion. Busola has filed at the police in Lagos. Fatou Ibu has to respond to that. I don't know where they're going to take the case. Okay, because Abuja, where he's based, Lagos, where they live, is not where this crime happened. It happened in Ilari. I've spoken to several people from Ilari. Family members on both sides I've spoken to. Friends, people that knew them, pastors, former pastors. Everything that I corroborated is false, Busola. And then to top it off, I found my interview with Busola and Timmy. Timmy told me on the red carpet at Love Like a Movie, LLAM, Dari Artaladi's Valentine concert, that he married and met Busola Pure as a virgin. That very same interview is the line that he used on that red carpet with another media outlet. And that video, and that video, I'm sorry. And that video, and that video is the video that Timmy archived. It belongs to another media outlet. That media outlet is one of your TV channels that do music and news. I'm not going to tell anybody where it is. They have actually taken it down. I don't know why, maybe at his request, but I also did that interview. And I found the story archive in my blog. My blog was shut down when I went to prison. In fact, it was deleted and I had to get Google to retrieve it. I was in prison, I told them, so I couldn't sign the agreement at the end of the year. And now I found it. It was done on February 2013. I wrote the story 220 after the event, 2013, six years, and I got the archive. I'm going to post screenshots of the story and everybody's going to see. I sincerely believe that they should withdraw this case because if that pastor comes after them, he will file defamation and it will get very ugly. Busola Dakolo and Tumishi Oluyedi were not raped. That's my conclusion. And I'll show you all my investigation. Thank you. I'm Kemi Lawyer.